morning and welcome to St. John the Divine. For the season of Epiphany, a very few people have gathered here at church to record morning prayer. If you would like to take part in this, even to just sit in the pew as a parishioner, please call or email the church office. We encourage and welcome all to share in this ministry. Support for St. John the Divine can be sent to the church at 216 East Chandler Boulevard, Burlington, Wisconsin, 53105, or can be contributed online at the church website, www. .stjohnthedivine.org. St. John's is preparing the 2021 budget for the annual meeting. If you haven't done so already, please return your estimate of giving pledge card as soon as possible. And please remember that during winter, just to keep the church at, it feels cold in here, that average is about $1,000 a month. If you do not have a Book of Common Prayer at home, please call or email the church office. We have people standing by to deliver one to you. I will give you as a light to the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Amen. People of God, oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> the mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. We'll say together the Vanity on page 82. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, Come let us adore him. Our first psalm is Psalm 63. O God, you are my God. Eagerly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you, as in a barren and dry land when there, where there is no water. Therefore, I have gazed upon you in your holy place, that I might behold your power and your glory. For your loving kindness is better than life itself. My lips shall give you praise. So will I bless you as long as I live and lift up my hands in your name. My soul is content as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth praises you with joyful lips. When I remember you upon my bed and meditate on you in the night watches, for you have been my helper, and under the shadow of your wings I will rejoice. My soul clings to you, your right hand holds me fast. May those who seek my life to destroy it go down into the depths of the earth. Let them fall upon the edge of the sword, and let them be food for jackals. But the king will rejoice in God. All those who swear by him will be glad. For the mouth of those who speak lies shall be stopped. Psalm 98, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. With his right hand and his holy arm, he has won for himself the victory. Lord has made known his victory, his righteousness has he openly shown in the sight of all the nations. He remembers his mercy and faithfulness to the house of Israel, and all the ends of the earth have seen the victory, victory of our God. Shout with joy to the Lord, all you lands. Lift up your voice, rejoice and sing. Sing to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the voice of song. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, shout with joy before the King, the Lord. Let the sea make a noise and all that is in it, the lands and those who dwell therein. Let the rivers clap their hands and let the hills ring out with joy before the Lord, 
when he comes to judge the earth. In righteousness shall he judge the world and the peoples with equity. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, and is now, and will be forever. Amen. Reading today's Old Testament reading is Isaiah. Come down and sit in the dust, virgin daughter Babylon. Sit on the ground without a throne, daughter Sheldia. For you shall no more be called tender and delicate. Take the millstones and grind meal. Remove your veil. Strip off your robe. Uncover your legs. Pass through the rivers. Your nakedness shall be uncovered, and your shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance, and I will spare no one. Our Redeemer, the Lord of hosts is his name, is the Holy One of Israel. Sit in silence and go into darkness, daughter Shaldea, for you shall no more be called the mistress of kingdoms. I was angry with my people. I profaned my heritage. I gave them into your hand. You showed them no mercy. On the aged, you made your yoke exceedingly heavy. You said, I shall be mistress forever, so that you did not lay these things to heart or remember their end. Now therefore hear this, you lover of pleasures, who sit securely, who say in your heart, I am, and there is no one besides me. I shall not sit as a widow or know the loss of children. Both these things shall come upon you in a moment, in one day. The loss of children and the widowhood shall come upon you in full measure, in spite of your many sorceries and the great power of your enchantments. You felt secure in your wickedness. You said, no one sees me. Your wisdom and your knowledge led you astray, and you said in your heart, I am, and there is no one besides me. But evil shall come upon you, which you cannot charm away. Disaster shall fall upon you, which you will not be able to ward off. And ruin shall come on you suddenly, of which you know nothing. Stand fast in your enchantments and your many sorceries, with which you have labored from your youth. Perhaps you may be able to succeed. Perhaps you may inspire terror. You are wearied with your many consultations. Let those who study the heavens stand up and save you. Those who gaze at the stars and at each new moon predict what shall befall you. See, they are like stubble. The fire consumes them. They cannot deliver themselves from the power of the flame. No coal for warming oneself is this, no fire to sit before. Such to you are those with whom you have labored, who you have trafficked with you from your youth. They all wander about in their own paths. There is no one to save you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We're going to say it together, Canticle 16, found on page 92. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight, all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The second reading from the New Testament of Hebrews. Therefore, my friends, since we have confidence to enter the sanctuary by the blood of Jesus, and by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is, through his flesh. 
And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us approach with a true heart in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who has promised is faithful. And let us consider how to provide one another to love and good deeds, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encourage one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. For if we willfully persist in sin after having received the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins, but a fearful prospect of judgment and a fury of fire that will consume the adversaries. Anyone who has violated the law of Moses dies without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. How much worse punishment do you think will be deserved by those who have spurned the Son of God, profaned the blood of the covenant by which they were sanctified, and outraged the spirit of grace? For we know the one who said, Vengeance is mine, I will repay. And again, the Lord will judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. We will read together Canticle 21, You Are God, found on page 95 of your Book of Common Prayer. You are God, we praise you. You are the Lord, we acclaim you. You are the Eternal Father. All creation worships you. To you all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim, sing an endless praise. Holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you. Father of a majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, You did not shun the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come again and be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. A reading from John. Now in Jerusalem, by the Sheep Gate, there was a pool called in Hebrew the Zava, which has five porticos. In these lay many invalids, blind, lame, and paralyzed. One man was there who had been ill for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew he had been there a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be made well? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. And while I am making my way, someone else steps down ahead of me. Jesus said to him, Stand up, take your mat and walk. At once the man was made well, and he took up his mat and began to walk. Now that day was a Sabbath. So the Jews said to the man who had been cured, It is the Sabbath. It is not lawful for you to carry your mat. But he answered them, The man who made me well said to me, Take up your mat and walk. They asked him, Who is the man who said to you, Take up and walk? Now the man who had been healed did not know who it was, for Jesus had disappeared into the crowd that was there. Later, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, See, you have been made well. Do not sin any more, so that nothing worse happens to you. The man went away and told the Jews that it was Jesus who had made him well. Therefore the Jews started persecuting Jesus, because he was doing such things on the Sabbath. But Jesus answered them, My father is still working, 
and I also am working. For this reason, the Jews were seeking all the more to kill him, because he was not only breaking the Sabbath, but was also calling God his own father, thereby making himself equal to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In both Paul's letter to the Hebrews and in John's gospel, we hear the importance of acting and proclaiming our faith. Of the importance of not just believing, but in living out our belief. We are reminded that our trust in God cannot be separated from our daily lives, our words, our deeds. We are better Christians when we walk in the path that Jesus sets for us. We are better Christians when we do not keep our love of God to ourselves, but rather share it with the world. When we purposefully use it to make the world and life better. How can we provoke ourselves and one another to love and to good deeds, encouraging one another in faith and action? How many ways, how often, in how many settings can we more vibrantly bring our faith to word and action? Amen. continue with the Apostles' Creed found on page 96. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We'll say suffrages A, found on page 97. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, Sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Give us grace, O Lord, to answer readily the call of our Savior Jesus Christ and proclaim to all people the good news of his salvation, that we and the whole world may perceive the glory of his marvelous works, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, 
forever and ever. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers, which we offer before you for all the members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you. Through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Prayers of the people today. We pray for our church, for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Becky and Sandy, our wardens, Jessica, Phil, Connie, and Deanna, our vestry. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Church of Bangladesh. Prayers for the parish of the, the Diocese of Milwaukee, St. Paul's, Milwaukee. In our community, all the Burlington Area Churches, Love Inc., the Transitional Living Center, the Women's Resource Center, our Diocesan Hospitality Center in Racine. We pray for those suffering from war, natural disasters, or the economic crises in our world. We pray for those who are our enemies, for those in the armed forces, and especially those deployed. This week in our parish cycle of prayer, we pray for Marilyn Johnson and Rebecca Cronkey. For those celebrating birthdays, Judy Emery, Jack McCann, Dolores Spitzer, Jan Ekola, Sue Hollingstad, and Trisha Heilingenthal. We pray for those celebrating an anniversary, for those preparing for the birth of a child, for those celebrating the birth of a child, for those preparing for baptism. We pray for those who are in need, for John, Jane, Don, Marion, Marilyn, Cinny, Betty, Mary, Marilyn, Pidge, Lana, Estelle, David, Tom, Jimmy and Tommy, and for Eunice. And for those affected by the coronavirus, we pray for Scott, Craig, Neller, Cece, Ruth, Phil, Sarah, and for Kristen and family. We pray for those who have died. Let us pray for those suffering from natural disasters, domestic and foreign violence, and the pandemic and its effects. Let us pray for nations and peoples as they strive to be better and to do better. Amen. Continue with the general thanksgiving found on page 101. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Amen. We'll continue with the prayer of St. Chrysostom on page 102. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Yeah.